Choo-choo, it's about damn time. Mother. Greg Joseph, to quote Lizzo, Greg Joseph made both of his his field goal attempts, including one from 51 yards, and made all three of his extra point attempts. Hopefully, this can put to rest our concerns. I'm still concerned, but um, you know, Dex said on PD that this was his bold statement that Greg Joseph was the what the best player on the field. For the Vikings on Sunday, is that right, Declan? Am yeah, I was. You correct? That is correct. Okay. That, is correct. That, was, that, was, that, was, that was a hot take, but yeah. that was the hot take. But anyway, that is where the bar exists now. That is where, like, because he actually did his job, a 51 yard field goal in 2022 is not front page news, but it seems when Joseph makes one, it is. So it's about time that there was no drama involving a kicker. Hopefully, this doesn't come up again, especially once we hit the playoffs. Yeah, he – did you guys – well, Judd, you probably didn't because you were at the game not listening to the wonderful Ian Eagle call play-by-play on CBS. Oh. Seven shouty soldiers. I'm Dan Rather. Um, so he called – it was funny because he was mentioning before the kick, like Joseph's kind of walking off the steps, and Greg Joseph has missed his last five 50-plus-yard field goals, and as he's – it was – classic like it was like a the pat summerall call of the 98 gary anderson Ugh. kick where he's kind of like telling the backstory as the ball's being kicked he's missed his last five 50 yard field goals and those struggles ball gets up in the air will and he was about to say will continue because the ball started <laughs> outside the right post yeah. yeah and he had to like it was like a a golfer hitting a drive down the right side of the fairway oh you got to you can't go slide. right on this. It's like, oh, yeah. bend it back. And it just barely sneaks back in. And Ian Eagle finishes the call by saying, we'll come to an end here with this made 51 Brilliant. Brilliant. But he still has a case of going to the right. There's still issues there. So that because that 51 yarder, I'm glad it went in, but it certainly wasn't right down the middle. It wasn't right down Broadway. He's still pushing some of these these kicks. So. We'll see. But it is nice that he was perfect. They needed basically all of those kicks because I think Declan pointed this out too. On Maybe it was on Ventline yesterday. But if he doesn't make the 51-yarder, and who knows, maybe the game flow plays out differently. But guess what happens? The Jets just kick a field goal. Yep. The Jets would have been down by two, right? They would have kicked a game-winning field goal to win the game. So they mm-hmm. really needed all those kicks from Greg Joseph yesterday. Mm-hmm. Just hopefully that's it. We never talk about him never again. Never doubt. Because he no, makes all his kicks. Oh, there's a lot of doubt. Okay. Um, I brought this up on Purple Daily on Ventline yesterday. And I know Judd kind of disagrees. But my statement here is everything from this point forward for the 2022 Vikings is house money. The expectation for Purple Daily and for us in general at Mackey and Judd Score North is we want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl. But... That is a macro aspect. I think sometimes people think you guys just want you guys. If they don't, if a team doesn't win a championship, you just hammer them. It's like, no, there's the macro goal here is we want more championships. Damn it. Among Minnesota sports teams, mm-hmm. the Lynx gave us a few. That was great. But the men's teams have given us nothing since 1991. So ultimately we want our franchises to be on championship trajectories, championship paths. Don't settle for, you know, Bad front offices, etc. So where I'm at with this is, yes, I want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl. I've never expected 2022, first-year GM, first-year coach, roster a little bit in flux. I've never expected this to be the year. Now they have run with this thing. They're 10-2, and two, one of the best records in the league. They're going toe-to-toe in the fourth quarter with all these teams. They just faced the four best defenses. They went 3-1, and one, so... Like, they are raising the expectation bar week by week by week. But I personally am looking at this now and saying, boy, they're 10-2. and I mean, hell, if they can even just, like, get to 13 wins, be nice to win a playoff game. Um, But this is the start of a nice window, and I'm looking at the Super Bowl thing as more of a macro, like, three-year thing than I demand it to happen this year. So anything that happens this this point going forward, they are not a tier one team. They are not Philadelphia. They are not Dallas. So unless they yep. do something in December that puts them on that level, uh, this the defense has limitations. 
they are kind of maxing out this car right now. They they are they are in the red with the speedometer right now, and they're trying they're trying to drive this thing like 80 miles an hour on the freeway, and it's rickety, but they're doing yeah. it. Dallas has a better car. Philadelphia has a better car. So that's where I'm at with this team right now. I'm very torn on this point though because there there are years and it's not consistent and it's rarely back to back. There has been so much good karma for th this team. I, I mean, quarterbacks get hurt. Garoppolo is now out. Like like San Francisco is Brock Purdy, and so I where I'm torn is like you're not going to have this much. I you know call it luck, but you're not going to have this much goodwill go your way next year. So I get your point, Phil. Um, and, and I think I said on Ventline yesterday, I guess my thing is just don't get embarrassed. Like don't get to the, don't get to the divisional round and get your ass kicked like San Francisco did or the uh, conference championship game and get your ass kicked by Philadelphia. But I'm torn on the whole thing because we have seen teams get good fortune and good luck and capitalize on that. And they keep riding that wave. That's why that's why I'm curious about the playoffs and like how you prepare and what you can do because I mean that's a series of individual just tough as hell games uh but if you have the mentality potentially who knows I just think that there's a window yes but there's not a window for this much good fortune and this and this good of feeling I don't think for 23 so I'm really torn here where, where, all right, what, what do you what's your expectation right now Declan like for the bike, like they're they're ex where they should like, go. Like if they if they do this, you will feel somewhat fulfilled with the season. Winning a playoff What's game. Okay. I I, th I think the this I don't want to call it the ceiling, but the expectation is to win a playoff game. The expectation is to win a playoff game. Um, and I don't know that that was the expectation before the season, uh -uh, but it but it but it probably is now. Like the expectation yeah, has gone from game. get to the playoffs to now win a playoff game. But they're not Philadelphia. They're not Dallas. The conundrum that they face, and Judd brings up this point, that they're getting so many breaks, not just obviously in their own play, but externally. And those external breaks are probably not going to come along like they have this year. So, yes, I believe that this is really only step one. And then next season is really when this thing starts to blast off. The issue is, is regression and those type of things are going to now happen. So you might be like the Vikings could finish 14 and three realistically, which is wild, but they could, they could go 14 and three the rest of the way. And then next season they could be at an 11 win team. So they would, you know, regress from their wins and loss standpoint. Yeah. But are other things not going to go their way? So do other things start to pop back up? Does the offense look more honed? It's a very interesting situation. Cause I think record wise, they're probably going to maybe regress next year, but are they still taking the next steps and the necessary steps to look like a Super Bowl contender? Because I think in year two of Kevin O'Connell, that's when we really can start ratching it up. Well, there was, you know, the, the Packers are an example. They went, let's see, the year before. So Rodgers' second year as starter, they went 11-5. and five. They had one of the best point differentials in franchise history. Well, it was it was the second best point differential in the last uh, 25 years of Packers football. And they got beat in the first round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, they were worse in the regular season. They actually only won 10 games. Did not win the division because the Vikings... Oh, no. Who won the, who won the division Bears. in 2010? The Bears did in 2010? That was the... And they won the Super Bowl as a wild card. So, like, there are mm -hmm. examples in NFL history of, oh, you go from... 13 wins down to whatever, but right. you're just a more honed team. Maybe you faced a tougher schedule. Maybe you lost some one score games. So, like, I don't, I don't think them having good fortune this year means that they're just screwed next year. Cause ideally next year, every, the, like everything will just be better. Another year in a system, they'll put some younger defensive players back in the mix here. So I, I guess I'm not looking at this as this is your only chance this year you must win a Super Bowl or everyone gets fired and it's over. That's not where this franchise is at right now. It's weird, though, because, you know, the the thing is, so the, the two defeats throw me a bit because they were pretty bad. I mean, the Dallas one was terrible. Yeah. So, but but here's what, but here's where I wonder if, if you can get into the playoffs with a coherent plan and ride the wave is this team, and we see it in O'Connell's postgame speeches, clearly has such a belief 
which is in in sports to me is incredibly important. Like he's got this team in particular right now with guys that won't be back, believing completely in themselves. Um, and so like that's where sports is weird. And I mean, we have seen teams that we don't consider to be the best get on playoff rolls. And I mean, there's a lot here too. Can Kirk do that? There's just a lot of questions. Um, but this does have a special feeling that I don't know if you can recapture in 2023. It feels in some ways like lightning in a bottle, but can you then extend that into the playoffs? Which is why I said I would be behind the scenes prepping for the teams I think I might face. Because what you got to do is you got to surprise them and beat them for four quarters. What happened against Dallas, you know, in week 11 doesn't matter. Philadelphia, same thing. Can I catch them by surprise? And don't forget, you guys, Nick Foles. Nick Foles hammered the Vikings in the conference championship game, and that defense was considered elite. So, well, like, weird things can happen. But see, that one more thing on this, and we can get to the next game. But 2017 – the year you're re referencing, mm. that was a lightning in a bottle season. It was a backup quarterback with no real, like at that time, they had no long-term answer at quarterback. And they might not right now either because of Kirk's age, but but they had they didn't know who their quarterback was going to be the next season. They had a, the number one defense in the NFL. And historically, we know that that is not, that is, it's, it's it, you're not lucky to have built it, but it doesn't sustain itself beyond like a two-year window historically. The 85 Bears defense. Go look at the 87 and 88 Bears defenses. Like, it erodes fast because it's hard to keep 11 guys together. Sure. So, 2000, and you had a head coach that was a defensive-minded head coach. So, to me, 17 was lightning in a bottle, and they whiffed. They they failed. That was their chance to maybe win a Super Bowl. I see Kevin O'Connell as being sustainable. I see an offensive approach and a system as being sustainable. And I see probably a five or 10 year window of being really competitive with great leadership here. So it would be nice to cash in this year, but I'm not going to view it as like this crazy missed opportunity because they are punching above their weight class in a big, big way. But maybe that maybe there's another, I mean, we've all said there's another level to this thing. If they, maybe they hit it in December and all of a sudden now it's like, Oh, maybe they are Dallas. Maybe they are Philadelphia. Rocky, oh. man. It's Rocky. You got to believe. <laughs> yes. They gotta get mean. Um <laughs> next statement for me. Is the ninth time the charm? So this is the ninth time the Minnesota Vikings have started ten and two in their history. The ninth what? time. Yep. The ninth yeah. time that the Vikings have started ten or two or better. Ten That's and two or better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like one every six years, basically. And in let's see here, six of those eight previous appearances, the Vikings at least made it to the NFC title game. They have lost two Super Bowls in that stretch, but they have most recently lost four straight NFC title games when starting 10 and 2 98, 2000, 09, 2017. Um, all this NFC championship games in my lifetime. I'm about to turn 30 in a week. So, all those championship games in a lifetime, they've started 10 and 2, they have lost. Can you now break the streak? Can you finally get with this house money that Phil is talking about? Bank yourself maybe some cushion with a home playoff game or two, maybe three. And can you actually snap this streak? Do you have to go on the road potentially and smack someone in the mouth? Yes, you'll have to potentially do that. But I would love to see the Vikings finally cash in this opportunity and break this horrible streak of NFC title game losses. So can the Vikings break the streak? The 2000 team was interesting because they, you know, they were two years after the 98 debacle. They've, all right, they've come back now with Dante Culpepper as their starting quarterback, and they're trying to push this rock up the hill again. They start 11-2 and two that year, and then they lost their last three regular season games to basically lose all momentum, and I think that was their shot too. I think faltering down the stretch is what cost them a home game in the NFC Championship game as well. Which became a theme after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And then they they bounce back. They played a home playoff game against the Saints, but they had to, like I said, go on the road against the Giants, in which they may or may not have had the headphones bugged. But that Giants team finished twelve and four, so the Vikings had to lose out to fall behind the Giants. Would that history have played out differently? Because then the then the Vikings with that offense would have, if they would have beat the Giants at home, they would have played. 
the Ravens, that historical Ravens defense yeah, they would have in been, the Super Bowl. That would have right. been a problem. Yeah. yeah. That, it would have been I, a problem, but the but but the Ravens wouldn't have the Ravens weren't facing offenses like that. So I also think but, going back to that time though, that that there was, as I recall, um a collective hangover from 98 that still existed i don't remember that 2000 team i don't recall th- thinking this is a great team it was a and good I, team yeah yeah but i mean i think part of it was my bias because recovery from ni- 98 has taken a long time i would argue for some it's still ongoing but um yeah that was a good that was a good team but in 2000, I never thought to myself, okay, here's Juggernaut 2, right? Like, here's the second. Ju- and then and then they collapsed, uh, as you said, towards the end of the season, and it sort of came undone. 41 Donut shocked me, but the fact they lost didn't shock me. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Donuts, by the way, you know, you should oh, enjoy them in moderation if you want to lose weight. That's my advice. Do you have better advice? I have, uh, I have much be- better advice because, you know, if you're sitting on the couch right now and you're looking at yourself and you're thinking, oh man, I got to lose weight. Don't wait until January 1st to start. Do it today and and do it with help from my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers. If you're in town, that's great. There's places to go to. If you're not in town, guess what? Virtual visits are an option, but right now is the time to pounce. Not only are you going to be feeling great by January 1st if you do this now, but you're also going to save 50% the holiday offer is the best one of the year. Save 50%. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Livia, L-I-V-E-A dot com. You're going to lose the weight. And the best part is they're going to then help you keep the weight off so it won't come back. So when March hits, you'll be feeling fantastic. You'll be fitting into a ton of clothes. Start today, Livia.com. Uh, and then also a shout out to our friends at Federated as well. Federated has been around for over 100 years. Sorry, I was, I was staring at uh, playoff scenarios here oh i'm trying to find a i'm trying to find a way for something to happen here but um federate has been around for over 100 years they're based in owatana since 1904 and they have provided a hundred plus years of help to business owners maximizing the success of your business looking out ahead on choppy waters to help protect your business during both good and bad times you just need that guiding hand federatedinsurance.com where it's our business to protect yours real quick um Somebody tweeted in, okay, now that, so Dallas is clearly a, Dallas is awesome. Dallas is a really good team. I don't know if we trust Mike McCarthy, but Dallas is no joke. Philadelphia is no joke. The Niners just lost Garoppolo, so they're starting Brock Purdy, and it didn't matter in that win against the Dolphins, but it could matter at some point. Yep. And then yep. uh, then you got like a sub-500 Buccaneers team, and then you got like giant Seahawks commanders, so there's, it's pretty thin in the NFC. If the Vikings stay at the two seed, somebody was... No, here's my question to you guys. Do they reseed, like, in the first round? Let's say that... So right now, it's Eagles, Vikings, Niners, Buccaneers. Those are your top four seeds. And then the wildcard teams are Cowboys, Giants, Seahawks. If the six... So the Vikings play the Seahawks right now. Let's say they win. And then uh, let's say the Giants up the six seed Giants upset the three seed Niners. Mm-hmm. Cor- cor- correct me if I'm wrong, but the bracket is set either way. Like the Eagles wouldn't then play the low seed that advances, right? The Eagles would still play the winner of the four five game. No, and the I Vikings. Think that, would... I think they would play the lowest seed possible. So if a would six they? seed won, they would play the six seed. The Vikings would play the next lowest seed, okay or the higher seed i should say that's what we have to figure out here um but if let's say the niners beat the giants and then dallas beats the buccaneers which would be a road game for dallas even though they're gonna have the better record mm-hmm. i believe dallas would play the eagles in the divisional round could dallas then knock the eagles out in philadelphia and then the vikings would have to beat like the niners in the second round or something but what I'm getting at here is if Dallas plays the Eagles before they get to the Vikings, the Vikings would then play a home game in the NFC Championship game. Yeah. Be yep, huge. That sounds absolutely okay, correct. Way ahead of ourselves here. Way ahead yeah. of ourselves. But yeah, you got to worry about your first first game, <laughs> first playoff game, which I'd be preparing for right now. Yeah. But so back on who is it? Let's go to Judd. What's your next statement? 
I'm out of statements. Oh wow. I've okay. I'll give you one more. Wow. And you're, just done, huh? you're just. I'll go back to well, nothing else. I've got to one give. more. Well, I've got one more, but I I was going to <laughs> since we, we thoroughly vetted this one on purple. Let's go to the bathroom daily, but I'll say it again. No, <laughs> you have I don't. To go? You have to go. No, I gotta no, go. No, I don't have to go. Um, one tough guy is my statement. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins continues. You know what? We could talk about his stats being down. He certainly didn't have a great day. In fact, he had probably for his standards, a very bad day. He's talked about the fact, heck, after the Patriots game, he openly talked about the fact that, that he is not happy with his own play. It's great to win, but his own play is not great. But there's one thing that you can't question about this guy. 78 potential games of meaning as a Viking have been played since Kirk Cousins signed in 2018. Mm -hmm. He has played in 76 held out of what one game because of playoff seedings were set, held out of another last year against Green Bay because of COVID. But as far as injury goes, a guy who took a beating on Sunday, an absolute beating, got up every time at one point. Um, he actually inflicted a hit on, on the Jets linebacker, C.J. Mosley. Kirk Cousins, the one thing you cannot question is this is, as I declared on PD, this is currently the toughest quarterback in the National Football League. He always gets up. And the only snap that he missed this year against the commanders was because he went down and they forced him to sit out a snap. And he did. He went off kicking and screaming. He did. He said, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And, and they're yep. like, no, you, because you, you were down, you have to miss a play. But if you just look at this guy's toughness, I will say this. I think that we, we could debate like if the Vikings don't win, is Kirk the guy? Does he lead? Blah blah blah. Clearly, that's changed because things are going well this season. But the one thing that I am sure everyone who has ever played with Kirk respects is he is one tough dude. Absolutely, yes. You like that? Absolutely. You like uh, that? And I'll give you, I'll give you one more Kirk one. There's, there's a few other talkers here that I think I'm going to withhold a couple things for like the Tuesday Wednesday shows here. That's there's, there's did. a couple bigger ones. That's what here. I did. I didn't want to throw away my best stuff at the end. You, thought, <laughs> you, you figured me out. Okay. Um, Eric Kendricks after the game. Here's my statement. Kirk has gained the full respect of this locker room. And I don't think he ever was like an outcast in the locker room. But I think he just he just worked there for large chunks of the last four years. He, whether it's the, the chains on the plane or whether it's him for about half these games, breaking down the post game, you know, one, two, three Vikes or whatever. Uh, to yesterday, Eric Kendricks said, That's my quarterback verbatim. That's my quarterback to yep. the media. He is the 2022 version of Kirk, I think, is just more comfortable stepping into this thing than he's ever been in his entire NFL career. And the head coach and the team are all rallying around him. Uh, there are discussions. I'd love to talk to you guys maybe tomorrow on Purple Daily about what's needed going forward. But Kirk's got the Kirk's got the full attention of this locker room right now, even even on days where he doesn't play particularly well. I think that there's a lot of respect for the fact that the stats are down, but the wins are up, and that's what is being focused on mm -hmm. here. And look, I, I do think that Kirk is being asked to make plays at times and do things that, that are outside of what he wants to do. Um, but he does them and, and he tries and I, I would guess that if you privately were to poll players, the feeling about Kirk and, and the respect has really gone up because there's a lot of things that personally probably don't benefit him, but the team is winning games. He's having fun and he is definitely doing things to lead that I feel like we didn't see before. And I know he didn't like Mike and I know Mike's the bad guy here. But the thing is, Kirk's a grown adult who who is making a ton. He could have done more previously, but what's important is he's doing that now. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anyone else? Dex, any? We good? I'm good. Good? I'm good. Yep. We're good. We're, wait, wait. We're not going to talk about your basketball team, Phil? A statement about oh, your basketball team? If, no. No. <laughs> no. We are not. You don't we, talk we do about that? We do have a flagrant howls episode coming out on this Monday. You want to talk about how they screwed me on Saturday night from a write that down? Oh. What was I your got, write that down? Oh, they were going to win two games. They would beat the Grizzly and, Grizzlies and Thunder, and I got the Grizzlies win, so I got pretty cocky Saturday afternoon. Josh Giddy. Uh, they uh, almost screwed me worse than you because I had the same prediction, but I had to tack on an extra thing to it, and my extra thing was they would win one of the games by double digits. Well, 
the the gri- the Grizzlies had a layup with like four seconds to go in garbage time to cut it from ten to eight or eleven oh. to nine or whatever it was. I, I didn't oh. even. I, I was there and I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, all right. No, no, we will not be. No, before and before we, anyone can say anything else about them, let's just end the episode here. They do not deserve any extra attention. Mackie and Judd, see you tomorrow.